welcome to Izzy's Crafty Bees live here on YouTube today, Tuesday the 22nd, because it's Tuesday, Tuesday the 22nd of February, so 2202-2022. So you're welcome to Tuesday. Um, I can see I've got somebody watching live um, and I just want to welcome any comments during the demonstration. I will endeavour to keep my eye on any comments that are coming through. I'm just looking at the light and I've opened my blinds fully for daylight on my workspace but it's making me perhaps look a bit washed out but hey who cares. So yeah welcome to Izzy's Crafty Bees. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator here in Nottinghamshire in the UK um, and I'm here to do a live demonstration today just making two cards using one bundle and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to stamp this stamp set but as always before I start my demonstration um, I'm going to just highlight a couple of my golden moments since I last demonstrated live which actually was a fortnight ago so one of my golden moments since I was last here is that uh, my husband Andrew had a birthday and we had a weekend away at our holiday home in Norfolk. So I say holiday home, that sounds tres posh. It's actually a touring caravan that we have on a seasonal pitch. It doesn't make it any less special because it's not bricks and mortar. We absolutely love and adore the county of Norfolk. It's just one of the most fabulous places. We spend a lot of time there. So yeah, so we had a lovely short break in Norfolk. We celebrated his birthday with cake. And linked in with that weekend, I actually delivered a class for four lovely ladies, one of whom I know is watching. Hi, Helen. Thank you for watching today. It was an absolute delight to be able to meet with Helen in person again as we're coming more and more out of restrictions in the UK. And um, we had a fabulous class learning how to use stamping up products having some fun and giggles and more cake so yeah it was fabulous and um just a little fun eight golden moment on friday last in the midst of storm eunice we lost power we live in a semi-rural part of nottinghamshire not completely out in the sticks but we are a little bit removed from the village there's a row of seven properties where I live and we're back onto open fields and woodland. And um, our electricity supply can be a little bit frail at times because the cables run right the way through the forestation, the plantation out there. And uh, yeah, in the midst of Storm Eunice, one of the power lines blew down completely and caused a small fire in the forest, which was quite exciting. We lost power until about half past nine at night and um yes yeah, so yeah um so our neighbors had to rescue us <laughs> it was really funny well they didn't really rescue us we texted each other has your power gone off yes mine's gone off so i messaged back and said if you want to huddle together for warmth later we've got a bottle of wine open so about five minutes after that there was a knock at the door and there they were and um uh, then we sort of sat around chatting and I said, hang on a minute, you've got a log fire, we don't have any heating, <laughs> we lit some candles and you've got a gas hob. So we actually decamped to next door where they fed us and it was a great evening. So out of disaster comes happiness. They're my golden moments for the last week or so. What are your golden moments? If you've had some fun or some um, had some really lovely highlights, something that's made you happy, Pop them in the comments and I'll read them afterwards. But apart from that, I'm going to swing the camera around and I'm going to get on with this demonstration because I've got two really cute cards for you. Now, let me just see. I'm still fairly new to live on YouTube, so let's make sure I can work the camera. It's not too different to Facebook, but I want to always make sure I get a good angle. And I'll just stand for a few moments. Um, yeah, so... As always, I will just highlight um, how you can find me. So is this craftybees.stampingup.net. You can shop with me or you can join my team there anytime. At the moment, we have celebration, um, one of our um, promotion periods until the 28th of February. 
you can shop at any time but until the 28th of February if you shop and you're placing an order online for over £20 then please use this host code in the box when prompted um, and I will send you a free gift in the post as a follow-up. Um, okay, so let's get on. Let me show you these cards. I'm just going to pop my glasses on. I just have a quick glance at the screen. I think I've got Shaz watching now as well. Hi, Shaz. Thanks for joining this lunch break. I hope you've got your packed lunch with you and a cup of tea. Um, okay, so I want to show you this bundle. It's really cute. Flowering Rain Boots is the stamp set. It's a photopolymer stamp set and it has 11 stamps. Some nice images and some lovely sentiments. And to go along with the stamp set as a bundle, there is a matching set of dies. So you can see that the dies actually cut out the images. So they coordinate really beautifully with the images. And I'm going to, and then we have this one as well these two this one creates a kind of a trellis so you can cut out a paper trellis and this one cuts out a really cute trowel that you can pop next to your images this little square one does cut out this packet of seeds so it's a really fun stamp set and uh, matching dies bundle that I'm going to share with you today so I'll just pop the dies to one side and the stamp set case because I've actually mounted all my stamps onto blocks so um, I'm also going to bring in a couple of embossing folders to use and give some texture to the background of the cards. I'm going to use a punch for this sentiment and then I'm also going to share with you where I got this cheeky sentiment. Um, oh, hi mum and <laughs> hi Maxine. Oh, I'm just laughing at my mum. Mum, I did tell you I was now on YouTube Live. I'm not using Facebook Live anymore because it's just naughty and it doesn't work. Well, hi, thanks for joining. You've not missed anything. I've just been yakking away as usual. <laughs> um, yes, so I'm going to also share with you where I got this cheeky, cute sentiment. So your feed is a bit fuzzy. Do you mean out of focus, Shaz? Let me just try something. Um, not sure whether I actually cleaned my camera lens so bear with me everyone I've got a cleaning cloth I'll just give that cleaning give that camera lens a bit of a clean let's just see I'm going to focus on hands has that focus come back you can drop me a comment in the box and I will just press on so the reason I wanted to share two different cards was two different styles of stamping and I will explain as I'm going along. So I'm going to start with this one because this one has perhaps more technique and then we'll do this one as the second card. So let me just bring in, I'm not going to be cutting on screen today because I think we're okay with cutting, there's no fancy fold. So I've made a card base in, um, I'm just trying to remember the colours I've used, grey granite and I've made a base layer in basic white and then I've also made exactly the same size but in vellum. I've got myself some designer series paper which is from one of the colour family sets and this one is Poppy Parades. This is from the Brights selection of the colour families designer series paper. They come in a pack of six inch by six inch um, and I'm just going to use a snip from my scrap bin you think it's the Wi-Fi feed? Probably the weather, possibly, yeah. I think my I think my connection's strong at the moment. And then I've got also from my scrap bin some old olive cardstock and some Daffodil Delight cardstock and a couple of scraps of white just for the sentiment. So I'm going to... The um, main focus of this card and the reason I wanted to share the two different ones is for this card... I'm actually stamping onto coloured cardstock or patterned cardstock and then die cutting. So I'm going to take a seat. So whilst I'm seated, I won't be able to see comments because I don't work with two devices. I just work with one. I'm going to use for this card some basic grey ink, some grey granite ink, some mossy meadow and some crushed curry. 
So I'm going to do some stamping first and then we'll do some die cutting and some embossing and I'll just kind of chat as I go along. So the first things I want to stamp, first thing I want to stamp is those cute Wellington boots. And I stamped them using basic grey ink. So I'm just tap, tap, tap. I'm not giving it too much pressure. And oh, the other thing I need to use because we're a photopolymer stamp set is my stamp and pierce mat because if you remember photopolymer stamps don't have that cushion of um, sponge between the rubber and the block so we add the cushioning underneath and I'm just going to stamp those wellingtons straight down onto that designer series paper and um, this was just an experiment that I did to see what it was like to stamp on those spotty papers because I've got a cute pair of spotty wellies and um, they're so cute that when they broke and they split I've actually stood them on the back doorstep and I'm going to put a plant pot inside them so I wanted to have a go and I was really pleased with the results I thought that looked so cute on the spotty paper so I've stamped my wellies I'm just going to pop that to one side and I'm now going to stamp the flowers so from the set I've popped my you get two different flowers, tulips with stems and some daisy flowers and for this card I'm going to use those lovely tulips and I'm stamping onto Daffodil Delight cardstock but I'm going to use Crushed Curry which is a slightly darker yellow to stamp the flowers so again just tap 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 to ink up and I'm going to stamp the flowers twice I felt that I wanted to have a really decent bunch of tulips so I stamped the tulips twice and I'll die cut them twice um, let me just move my wet stamps to one side into a little box there and then I don't get ink all over everything um, and now I'm going to stamp I'm going to pop those to one side I'm now going to stamp the stems In Mossy Meadow again I'm stamping on to old olive cardstock but I'm going to use a shade of green darker than the actual cardstock and I'm only going to stamp one set of stems but I will double up the flowers on top of the stems once they're die cut and that will just give me a nice full bunch of flowers um, I will while we're inky and stampy, I'm going to just grab my grey granite ink and one of the scraps of card and I'm going to actually stamp my sentiment Live Life in Full Bloom, which I really liked. I think there must be some kind of heavy aeroplane flying over. Quite a loud noise outside. Um, and I'm going to use a punch for this one. Now, I wasn't sure whether this skingy scrap of card would allow me to actually position the sentiment inside the punch so I'm actually going to grab a post-it sticker to help. Now I've got some tiny post-it stickers that I just keep on the edge of my desk. These are those that you mark the edges of pages with and they're ever so handy to use as a handle for popping into your punch. So now I've got this handle and I can position my sentiment just where I want it inside the punch. And when I take that out, I can throw that whole lot away or I can keep my post-it sticker and pop it back on my little pad. Just keep that on the edge of my desk because I like to use up my scraps of white um, I've got quite a lot about this size in my scrap drawer and I do like to use them up so I find that's quite a good frugal tip to use. I can pop my punch to one side now. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually die cut these images that I have cut and I'm going to bring in the big machine to do that. So I'll just move my... Oh, shall we have a try with the little machine? Actually, I'm going to have a try with the little machine going to bring that in and I'm going to need the sandwich 
of the base plate and my two clear plates because these dies are small they should fit through the mini machine so whether I've got my cardstock small enough which I think I have there um, so bear with me while I do this now just a just a word about the mini machine I find and the um, it's not just me that finds this stamping up um, also recommend that you stagger the plates and I'm going to just explain that if I've not done so already with the other cutting machine you make sure that your sandwich let me just angle that is nice and square and you'll see that the plates are slightly chamfered on the ends and that's to help with feeding through um, the machine through the rollers now with the mini machine that chamfer sometimes is not enough so staggering your plate, let me just try and get that angle, helps when the rollers pinch it helps the whole sandwich to actually run through the rollers. So that's just a little tip if I've not mentioned that before. So let's just go ahead and cut. It does mean that I'm going to have to run through the machine more than once. But one of the reasons I wanted to highlight the mini machine today was or is that in March for the whole of the month of March our fabulous mini machine is actually going to be on special offer with 20% off so that will make the mini machine retail at £44.75 for the whole of the month of March which is fantastic really super value Not only that, my lovely stampy crafty friends, but during the month of March, selected bundles are going to be available at 20% off to enable you to collect some of these fantastic die sets. Now I have to say that Flowering Rain Boots, this was only announced this morning, so this is news hot off the press. And Flowering Rain Boots, sadly, is not one of those bundles. But don't get disappointed because there are some fantastic bundles included. So even if you've got the oops, even if you've got the mini machine, or indeed you've got the big machine, and you're not perhaps thinking of purchasing another one, it will still be a great month for you to grab a bargain with certain bundles because they're not exclusive to those customers who are just going to purchase one of our mini machines so that's great news because we're just finishing our celebration promotion and waiting with bated breath i might say for the annual the new annual catalog to come along so it's always nice to have another promotion and another offer to grab. So I'm just going to take my care, my time and a bit of care with the wellies. And what I might just do is grab a piece of washi and just stick that down a bit. We'll just keep that still. Ooh, come on. What have I done? Maybe I've just not staggered my plates enough there. There we go. There we go. There we are. Some lovely wellies. I think Wellington boots have different names in different countries. So maybe gum boots. Wellington boots for short in the UK we call them wellies welly bobs so what do you where are you watching from what do you call those rain boots let's have a look now um I've got all my little pieces of stamped and die cut images I can pop those to one side and my um, sentiment. The next thing I need to do actually is to um, emboss this layer of vellum. I absolutely love embossed vellum. It's fantastic but for this one I'm going to use the new Hive 
embossing folder which is one of the big embossing folders so I will have to bring in the big machine so let's bring in the big machine and I will need platform number one and I will need um, embossing plate number four and I always write on with a mark with a sharpie marker just to remind me hinge forward and what plates I'll need to use for the embossing folder. I find it just helps when I'm crafting in a hurry or I'm crafting half asleep or I've just simply forgotten which plates to use. There we go. Now let's have a look at this. I, I really love how um, embossed vellum comes out opaque and it's just I don't know it just really changes the look of it it's lovely but I am going to make this card a little bit more like a distressed or sort of I'm not going to go as far as to say vintage look but just that little bit more of a distressed look so I'm just going to take a seat again and I'll show you how I assembled this card so the first thing I want to do is take this white layer and I want to give it some kind of distressed look or um, just knock knock back really that plain whiteness so I'm going to use my um, grey granite ink and uh, dauber sponge dauber which is something I've sort of stopped using since the blending brushes came out but for this application a sponge dauber works really well so I'm just going to go around all of the edges and daub some ink and it should just take away some of that stark white look from the card and soften it there's a time and a place for crisp white backgrounds and then sometimes you just want a slightly softer look sure I like the word distressed it kind of makes me feel like it's in peril <laughs> nobody wants a card in peril oh you know what I mean if you've been watching me a while you probably know how my mind works <laughs> it's all about fun we have gotta have fun while we're creating and you can do as much or as little of this daubing as you want until you've got the look that you desire. Um, I will be doing some daubing around the vellum, but I've, I am actually going to rip some of that off. So I will close my ink while I do that. So you can see already when I start to layer these pieces up that I've got that slightly softened edge now. And now I'm going to really distress the piece of vellum it's too square it's um just too neat it's lovely but it's too neat so i'm going to go around and just nibble with my um thumbnail and just pull off some of these pieces that would be wonderful if i had strong thumbnails i just had a nail disaster i had a manicure disaster before i came on air it was terrible I thought I'd best give my hands a bit of a once-over because I've been doing all kinds of jobs and oh my nails are past the best and this one in particular is all breaking. So I popped on my um, favourite nail protector which I won't mention because that's a brand name and I'm not here to sell their products. Popped some of that on then I found oh there was a little nail polish jar of, um, a bottle of nail polish in the drawer next to me so I thought oh that's a nice colour pretty we'll just brighten ourselves up 60 seconds to dry yep yeah, we'll have a go with that put a coat on and it did dry in 60 seconds thought it looked a bit patchy so like you do I went to put a second coat on and um, thought it had dried <laughs> then I needed to go to the bathroom oh Disaster, smudged, chipped, looked just disgusting. So I took it off and went back to the single coat of nail protector. So there we go. We've we've now just nibbled all the way around and taken this down. Now, 
I want to say because it looked beautiful square and if you like square and you like neat and you like the white this card would look absolutely fine just left like that um, so this is all a matter of personal preference and personal choice whether you finish your card this way but I wanted to just demonstrate two quite different looks the second card has more of that clean simple look about it and I always like to show one of my things is versatility and making sure you get um, maximum use out of your investments and your stamp sets and dies in particular when you're buying a bundle although I'm a demonstrator and I may only demonstrate perhaps do one demonstration for example with one set I do use my sets lots um, and I always want to show maximum use from your products that you buy it's, I think it's definitely an investment it's not a, a purchase on a whim buying crafting stuff so that's one of my things is versatility so I like to show a different look maybe or different ways of using something so if you watch back any of my videos you'll hear me mention versatility and being versatile so I'm going to assemble the card now we've got all of our bits and pieces that we need here ready to go another um trend at the moment is to fold corners back and pop a couple of staples in like I've done with this one you could equally just roll the corner and leave it as is just sort of rolled over which I might do with this one I might omit the staples they're definitely a marmite love or hate thing um, so you're either on trend and love them or maybe just booking the trend and not quite enjoying that look so let's assemble I'm going to use multi-purpose liquid glue for my first layer and I'm going to give our um, what do we call it spready end I'm going to give our spready end a go because I don't often use it and the, <laughs> the reason why is probably because I stand my glues on their tip but earlier this week I saw another demonstrator reminding us that we do have a spready end to our Tombow for these larger pieces of cardstock. So all I'm doing is giving it a gentle squeeze as I move the glue around the base layer and I had absolutely forgotten <laughs> how funny, um, how lovely that spreading spatula end of the Tombow glue it's lovely that was really nice and easy to spread so if you struggle using the pointy end or the fine tip end then don't forget that we have that spreading side and that's stuck down really nicely and really well I am going to switch and use the the pointed end or the pen tip so it says on the actual if you can read it underneath all the blobby glue broad tip and pen tip I'm going to use the pen tip for the vellum um, I'm going to put so I'm going to turn the vellum over and I know that I'm going to stick my large image sort of here on this side so when I flip it over I'm going to look at the mirror of that side and I'm going to put some glue in that area in a quantity I'm going to put some glue at this top end and then a little bit in each corner but not too much because with vellum you can sometimes see the glue through one of the ways to get round that is to take one of your most powerful tools and that's your finger and just tap in the areas that you think it will show through tap it to spread it out now what do we need to do when we've tapped we need to get rid of that glue and I've just got some paper towel and I can just wipe that off. The other thing I do have on my desk is a sponge, a wet sponge in a Ziploc bag. And I use that for inky fingers. So I just pop my fingers in, inky and gluey fingers. I know that that's not been used for cleaning stamps. It's simply there just to help me with sticky fingers. I don't need to tap this bit because I know I'm going to stick my image there. So I can pop that now 
onto the base and when I squish that area in fact you can't because it's embossed you can't see the glue through the vellum if it was just flat naked vellum you'd probably be able to see where I'd put the glue if I hadn't tapped it away now I didn't want to stick it completely flat because this one I want to look a little bit more distressed um yeah a little bit more I don't know what the word is apart from distressed anyway there you go um vintage so I've not gone right round the edges and that's exactly the look I was hoping for. So I'm just going to assemble everything else and everything else is going to be stuck flat with the exception of my sentiment which I'm going to pop up on dimensionals. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the welly boots on and we'll go with multi-purpose liquid glue for the back of those. I'm sure I'm not the only person who drops things covered in glue. Now because I'm sticking to a, an embossed piece that's quite textured, I'm going to give it some pressure to stick it down. I'm also going to add perhaps more glue than I would normally. So the next thing I'm going to add is the stems and leaves of the tulips. I'm taking care not to go too near the edges because whilst I want plenty of glue, I don't want it to squidge out the sides and get everything sticky. Now these um, stems position beautifully designed to be positioned beautifully inside the wellingtons you can see how they've designed those just to fit fantastically just love i love and then i'm going to stick one strip of um tulips that's the word i was looking for one set of tulips and they're in a strip and i'm going to stick them on as they were designed to be stuck on but I'm actually going to put my glue towards the bottom of the image. And the reason for this is so that I can um, poke behind some of the other ones. And again, you can see that these have been designed to match up perfectly with the stems. So I've got two tulips here, two stems, two tulips two stems, one tulip slightly proud and one stem and two tulips to the left. And now I'm going to actually just um, tear these in pieces. Um, let me just have a think. I used the three down there so I will use my snips just to carefully separate those. I think I've perhaps used a different three which ones did I use then? I can't remember which ones I used for this one. Anyway, I'm going to use, I'm going to actually just do it slightly different. Let's take that one off because I don't want that funny shape to show. So I'm going to pop that one behind. So let's pop a spot of glue, fingertips, and just pop that one behind there and give it a press down and we'll pop these two oops and just round that bit off i can see it probably won't come across on camera but i could just see there was a sharp cut mark there so i'll just pop a little bit of glue on there and maybe just pop these two in the front here i'm going to take off that funny shape there and just round it a little bit and I've got two that I can pop behind now over this side and even though they're stuck flat they are layered because I'm going behind and in front and they're layering up lovely pop some more glue on and we'll have a think shall we pop those behind there let's pop them behind there and really go for a layer and I think you'll agree that having them layered up just makes them look like a, a much better, nicer, luxurious bunch. They were from the um, best selection in the supermarket and not just the budget version. So I'm going to stick my sentiment on now. But before I do that, I'm just going to stand up quickly and just see I'm still alive. Yes, I am. Nothing disastrous has happened there. Now, behind my sentiment, I've picked out some ribbon that's the same colour as the card base. Just because I wanted some extra texture, I've got lovely texture with the embossed 
piece behind but just some soft texture a piece of ribbon always does it for me now i could use um some yellow if i had some let me just have a look at what yellow i've got i've got some brighter gold um i've also got the green i have is um old olive and pretty peacock so if i just hold up those ribbons and just show you the difference so let's just move those out and we can have a think about maybe changing things so if i pop some ribbon and my sentiment there we could go with green it doesn't really do anything in terms for me it doesn't really do anything in terms of popping the color i think the pops of color that we've already got going on with the poppy parade and the daffodil delight yellow are sufficient so in my mind i'm happy to stick with a neutral shade and what better than perfect coordination with the card base on the layer so i'm just going to take my ribbon scissors and have a snip but that's what i would always do if i was in doubt about what color to go with in terms of ribbon or twine or any other accessories i'd just offer it up lay it down and um, have a look at it and just see what looked best now what kind of glue to use here i think i'm going to use a little bit of tear and tape i might have used um stamp and seal um, a dry glue my next trick i'm going to peel it off yes worked first time so the reason i've used a dry glue is that wet glue on ribbon would just be absorbed it would just absorb into the ribbon and it wouldn't stick down so i'm just popping that down with some tear and tape now it looks like on this one i've just curled my ribbon slightly differently so let's just try flipping that over oops that way seeing if that ribbon will just lie a bit flatter and that will probably lie flat in the post if you were to pop that in the post and i'm just going to grab a couple of our foam dimensionals if i've got a sheet that's good i mean of course i would never ignore using the edges but just for speed right now i'm going to pop a couple of dimensionals on the back and all of this tear and tape has done so far is anchor the um, ribbon down by popping the dimensionals on top of my sentiment that will make sure that that ribbon stays put and just a word about my position of my sentiment what i've done here is i've grouped everything together so everything actually touches sometimes um when i see um or I get messages from customers asking me about feedback on a card and a layout that they've designed. What tends to happen is, uh, particularly with beginner crafters, beginner card makers will have an image here and an image here and maybe the sentiment here and nothing's grouped together or touching and your eye doesn't quite know where to land. Whereas when you just slightly overlap or touch things together, your eye is drawn to the focal point, which is the imagery and automatically and quickly goes to the sentiment so that's just another quick tip for you there in terms of how to do your card layouts if you're struggling with card layouts so that's card number one i'm going to just keep my basic gray ink because i will need that for card number two let's have a look and i've decided with card number two which is a cleaner card to actually just change up I'm just going to pop those cards out of the way there. I'm just going to change up the colour scheme. I've decided to go with, um, what have I decided to go with? Let me just have a look. Bumblebee in the end. I couldn't decide between crushed curry and bumblebee. I've decided to go with a bumblebee card base and then go for some extra layers. So I've decided to bring in a layer of basic grey and then a layer of white embossed and then i've got a piece of white that i'm going to do all of my stamping on so the diff the big difference between my two cards is that the stamping of the images for card number one was done onto colored cardstock or patterned cardstock 
and my stamping for card number two is fresh and clean and is all done on white cardstock with coloured ink. So without further ado, let's have a look at what we are going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is do all of my stamping. So let's bring in Stamp and Pierce Mat again. I'm going to stamp the watering can in basic grey. So again, I just did tap, tap, tap on my ink pad, just letting the stamp kiss the ink. There's no need for what I call CPR. You don't need to press down too much on these juicy ink pads. And that gives us a nice crisp image. It will dry ever so slightly lighter as the ink dries. You will notice by the end. And I'm going to use Bumblebee to stamp those daisy flowers. This time just one. So tap, tap, tap. Just some light pressure. Let the ink touch the cardstock. Gives it a chance to actually sink in. Just one set of flowers. But I will stamp two um, plant pots, that's the word, in Cajun craze. So let's just stamp one plant pot, two plant pots in Cajun Craze, which I did notice in German, I think, is um, terracotta plant pot colour. Um, okay, so now we need to do some die cutting and I will bring in the bigger machine this time. although we know that the dies will fit through the mini machine. Oh, excuse me. Because I know that they'll all fit through the big machine together, we can do one pass through. So I need to grab the watering can, which I will anchor down again with some washi tape because I found when I was lining up the watering can that I needed to really take care, um, particularly with the spout. I thought I had it lined up and then it seemed to be very close to the edge of the spout. So once I've lined this up, I don't want it to move. Well, once I've lined it up where I think I'm happy, which I think might be there. I'll just don't want to interfere with those plant pots so I'll just move that down a bit. And that should just hold it. I'm going to pop one on one of the plant pots and get my flower image lined up. And once I pop my top plate down I'm going to give it a good nip with my fingers and thumbs and keep I'm just going to keep my fingers on the plate until I know it's gone into the rollers the first dies have gone into the rollers and that just helps with skipping because sometimes as there's a bit of movement as the first dies go through the rollers it can skip and you can and jump and then your position of your dies is lost so let's just remove that we're going to keep that one oops there's my watering can, one plant pot and one set of flowers and I'll just whiz that through again I'll just whiz that through and get that second plant pot and we're all good oh. I was trying to just be clever and push the top plate underneath the rollers instead of positioning it outside and then that skipped the, the die. I spotted it. I'm not sure if the camera picked that up because I'm sitting down but um, yeah that was a bit of static on the on the top. Let me just get rid of that and then I can explain. I'll stand up and explain. So what happened was when I put my stamped image down of the plant pot, 
and I had the plates kind of part way through into the rollers then when I went to put the top plate on I tried to feed it under the rollers and it just the static from the top plate just caught the die and moved it but I spotted it before I'd started rolling so that's something else just to watch as well the plastic plates do gather static um, and I do need to just emboss this layer and I will bring back mini because it's a mini embossing folder now I've got I'm not sure how many people are watching and how quick the comments come up I have used on my first card this embossing folder with the sort of almost all Achille leaves um, and that's a pair of embossing folders so the second one has some um, leaves I'm not sure if that's coming across on camera hopefully it is and that's a pack called greenery I've just got the new 3d embossing folders that are for the mini splats and stripes and I was wondering whether splats might be quite fun so I could put this to the vote but I'm not quite sure yet with YouTube just how quickly the comments come through so I'm not sure how many people are watching and able to comment but shall we have a vote for splats or leaves splats or leaves and I'll just while you're pondering that um, get the right plate ready because I don't need these top two and I've put my other plate down somewhere so that's quite handy oh there it is so I actually need plate number four. Um, I think it's plate number four. Yes, plate number four. Okay, I can't see any comments coming through, so I think I might just go with splats. Yes, well, it's, oh, stripes, stripes. I didn't say anything about stripes, I said stripes splats splats okay let's go with splats i thought the splats might be funny because they're it's a watering can so it could look i don't know what it's going to look like but we'll go with splats it's the first time i've actually used this embossing folder as well i've used the stripes one so i'm thinking that i'm hoping i've got the um sandwich right and I'm still going to stagger my plates and see how we get on with this one Ooh. it's really difficult with this grid sheet so I'm just going to peel that back so I've got no purchase on the actual desk Ooh. and I'm wondering whether I've just got the I'm really wondering whether I've got the um, sandwich right because that's not going through. Oh, that's a really great demonstration. Oh, heck. Okay, let's try another plate. Let's try this one. No, nope, that's not going through either. How funny. Plate number one. And plate number four with 3D embossing folders. I will not be beaten. Come on. I think usually when I'm standing at my other station, um, I must wind this through differently. Hmm. Now I'm wishing we'd gone with leaves because I've fed the leaves through and I've let fed the stripes through, so that's a bit odd. Let's pull that back a bit more. Come on. Come on, little machine, you can do it. Not the correct, 
definitely not the correct um, sandwich, so let's try it this way around. Oh goodness. Apologies everyone, I'm very frustrated by this. Yes, that was it. I think I had I need what I did differently there was I my base platform has a slight curve in it, so I turned it upside down and I think that that just helped feed it through. And they do recommend that we turn our platforms and our plates regularly, so there we are. So let's have a look at that lovely splats. It does emboss nicely. That just looks fabulous, like splats of water. Oh, I think I just missed some comments there. I just saw them disappearing. So here we go, we're ready now to assemble. So this one, I've just changed out the colour scheme slightly. So let me just take a seat and we can quickly and simply put this one together. So this is much more of a clean um, white look. So again, I'm going to use the broad end or the broad tip of my multi-purpose glue and you can see how just a little squeeze while you're spreading gives you just the right amount of glue. I'm <laughs> 10 years a demonstrator and 10 years I rarely use this broad tip end to my Tombow. I used to use it when I was scrapbooking because I was working with sheets of 12 by 12 12 inch by 12 inch um, cardstock or paper but in card making I think I've just got into the habit of using that pen tip for those even for those larger areas to spread now I will use um, I'll use the broad tip for this as well because this is a large area and I will use multi-purpose liquid glue always on embossed pieces because if you run a tape glue across it you run the risk of just squishing that lovely embossed layer. I'm quite tickled by that. <laughs> I don't use the broad tip. Oh. I really like the look of that splatter. Now to assemble this one I'm going to, again, just thinking about that grouping, everything's touching and I'm going to um, look quite, to be quite centralised with everything. So everything's flat down apart from the top plant pot and the top flower so we can have a reasonable amount of glue, maybe not too much around the edges because again we're sticking to um, a raised textured image so we want enough glue to make contact with the cardstock and we'll pop a tumbled over flower pot down now the temptation with this tumbled over flower pot is to almost stick it on a too much of an angle but what I found when I was assembling this card to start with was to focus on this piece here and just try and get that piece horizontal and it just tended to look better. And now I'm going to use some dimensionals. I'm going to pop the pot on one dimensional only just so it's ahead. And I'm not going to line them up. I'm going to stagger them so that we've got some overlap there so we'll just pop that one there and the flowers I'm going to pop on one dimensional I'm going to put the dimensional at the top so that this bottom of the flower can overlap the flower pot so actually they're at the same level but they look like they're sort of just raised above now where did I get that cheeky sentiment from well I'm glad you asked because I'm going to show you I don't think I've actually demonstrated my 
or shared with you my tin of sentiments. So I have this cute tin and I keep sentiments in it. I do keep odd ones that I've stamped and punched from different stamp sets, but the majority, like this one for example, but the majority of these sentiments in this tin are from our fabulous Many Messages stamp set and matching die. If you've not seen this before, I'm not going to demonstrate it in full, but I will show you how it works. It's a one stamp, um, red rubber stamp with all of these different sentiments. And I did actually count them because handily it says on the stamp set, set of one because it is just one stamp and I did count them last night and I can't remember how many I counted so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen nineteen sentiments and some little stars and a heart and what I find um is ha was handy was to measure the card and I've written on in Sharpie, cut your card 13.5 by 16.5 centimetres. And the reason for that is, I'm going to show you, so I've kept this, temp uh, this template. If I um, quickly just ink in basic grey and stamp it onto this piece of grid. So I've got this on my stamparators just for ease. It will also go on the largest block. But it's a little bit harder to handle, especially if you've got any dexterity issues with your thumbs. So Stamparatus is perfect. So if I just quickly stamp that onto the grid sheet in the Stamparatus and I just pop this template over the top, you can see how the die works. And what I find really handy about those stars, three stars in the heart, is it really helps you to line it up because the difficulty is sometimes you focus on the actual sentiments so when you're using the die you can use these little images to actually line up the die but the reason for the 13.5 by 16.5 is if I now just close over the stamp you can see that the stamp is actually shaped and the danger is that if you, and you can see how the dies have cut, maybe you can see, I'm hoping you can see, that the die shapes actually protrude outside of the stamped image. So when I first stamped this, I actually cut, I measured just to the edge of the widest bit of the stamp. And then when I came to die cut, I was really disappointed. So that's my tip to you if you buy this stamp set. And what I'm going to share with you is if I stamp that on a piece of plain cardstock and then I get the, the matching die and I position the matching die on top of the cardstock and run it through the machine. This is what I get. Here's one I prepared earlier. So this is what I get. I get a sheet of all of those sentiments so, with the little hearts and the little stars and they're all good to go fantastic I've also got another template that I can keep if I want to but I've now got more sentiments to pop in my tin which is ever so handy and the one I really loved was oh happy day the other one I liked was that little one and sending happy thoughts so we'll just get those three out i can tip all the rest into my tin i'm good to go really super i've got a great tin full of sentiments this is great as well when i go on holiday to the caravan i take this with me and maybe just a couple of stamp sets just to play with while i'm away so that's another nice bundle to share with you let me just move all of this out of the way and I can bring back my cards so my original in granny apple green and my new one in bumblebee with a basic grey border and I was wondering about maybe sending happy thoughts is quite sweet or just a simple thank you thank you ever so much it's quite a nice one as well that might look nice here Again, just grouping them together 
I love Oh Happy Day, it just makes me want to sing, but I'll spare you that. So I'm thinking sending happy thoughts, that's quite a nice sentiment. We can group that together, we can pop it up here, that doesn't look too bad up there. Anyway, we'll just stick that on, let's grab our Tombow and we'll just stick that down. And I'm not going to accessorise any further um, with, let's just pop that on there. I'm not going to accessorise any further with any bling or ribbon or twine. I'm happy with that. I think that looks really sweet. I'm just going to stand up and have a look. So here we go. Hopefully you can see those splats, that embossed background. It looks really cute with the watering can actually. And the original was the leaves. So just a nice difference. And I hope you've enjoyed that demonstration. I think I've managed just about to stick to an hour there, so I'm not too bad. Um, what else can I tell you? I'm going to just come back with a couple of last messages. I'll just leave those there a sec. You told me to do stripes. When did I ever do anything that my mum ever told me to do? Just saying. <laughs> the choice wasn't stripes it was splats or leaves it's too funny oh dear right i'm going to whiz my camera around and have a few last words oh my camera stand's just about to collapse let me sit down thank you sylvia here we go thanks sylvia yeah they are nice. The, the um, twin pack of splats and stripes. The stripes are quite different. Now, I do have a card somewhere. Bear with me. Uh -oh. Here we go. Here's a card that I did make using the stripes from that pack. So you can see there, um, I like a broken stripe. And that's a sneak peek of a card that will be appearing in my local in-person class at the beginning of March. Um, yes, yeah, so hopefully you've enjoyed that demonstration. So just a couple of messages to finish off with. I'm just, I've got a couple of reminders. Um, oh, actually one I've already, I've mentioned both anyway. So celebration, we're in the last week, the last full week of celebration. So if you place any order, over £45 you will qualify for a free item. If you're ordering online, you will be um, prompted to choose an item. If you spend multiples of 45, there are a couple of items that you can gain if you spend 90 pounds. So just study the offer online or in the mini catalog that I've sent you, the mini pamphlet about celebration that I've sent you. And it's the very last week. So during celebration, you get rewarded for three different actions, shopping, hosting, and joining. So if you join my team, this week until next Tuesday, you get to choose um, £130 worth of product from any of the catalogues or kits online and pay £99. But because it's celebration, you also get to add a further two stamp sets for free of your choice from any of the catalogues. Um, so the annual catalogue or the spring January to June mini catalogue. So it's a great time to think about joining up. Um, if you want an informal chat with me with absolutely no pressure whatsoever, then you know how to contact me. All of my contact details are here on YouTube and that's until the 28th of February 2022. If you're watching on playback at any time, that's the offer it will end on the 28th of February. Um, hosting is something quite different and I don't often talk about hosting. Hosting harps back to the um, glory days of Party Plan and when we could gather in person. Um, however, we can encourage you to host a virtual gathering. We can now encourage you to host an in-person gathering. If you wanted to host a party, a crafting party or even a crafting event, in your own home and any orders generated from that event um, will actually be collected together with you as the host and you will benefit from some host rewards and there is an extra host reward this year um, and I'm just going to grab it so it's this beautiful stamp set called Calming Camellia 
which also makes me want to burst into song, a culture club song. Um, and you can get this um, stamp set completely free if you host a qualifying event. The details are in the celebration pamphlet. And I always encourage people to think broadly about hosting. It's not just about party plan. If you wanted to host a craft event in your own home and you are local to me, um, which is North Nottinghamshire, and we can squeeze you in, then um, you can actually, you don't need me there. I can coach you about hosting that event. Then you can earn that free stamp set. So host, shop, or join my team and you will be entitled to some freebies, which is always good. And like I say, if you're not thinking about a purchase in for the remainder of February, but you are thinking about placing an order in March, then we've got that great offer of the mini machine with 20% off and a selection, which will be published very soon, a selection of bundles, stamp sets with dies that coordinate and will work with the mini machine also with 20% off and they don't have to be bought in conjunction with each other so that's what's coming up so keep your eyes peeled i will be coming back live again next week um, with some more fun cards so stay tuned stay safe in the storms i think they might have gone i'm looking outside now and it's sunny so hopefully the weather has turned and um, we're not going to get blown away or need our welly boots this week so stay safe stay happy just stay in your craft room and craft. Bye for now. Lots of love.